Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Uh, we've been talking about the Yesu FTDX10 for the last few episodes, and the next few episodes will be no different, and today's episode is no different also. <laughs> uh, but what I want to talk about today is the overall user interface or the user design, and basically just kind of get a feel for how everything's laid out, and uh, I'll talk about some things along the way. Uh, so we're going to go through some menus, we're going to take a look at the overall waterfall display and so forth, and then in the next video, I think I'm going to concentrate on all the voice features, such as the filtering and how this thing transmits. Uh, so stay tuned for that. If you like that idea, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But uh, let's jump into things. This is Ham Radio Dude. Now, I just wanted to clarify, and I'll clarify it in the title of my, my video as well, but when I say the user interface or the user design, I am talking about the actual display and the features and functionality of what's on that TFT display. One of the things that really, I know it's kind of a very small thing for some people, but for me being on YouTube and everything, this is a very big deal. I could take screenshots, and I find that really nice, and the screenshots turned out pretty pretty well, as you could see. So that's what I did. I took some screenshots and we'll talk about certain features of the menu. I have a couple of videos that we'll bump into here as well. To get started, we'll talk about the, the meter on the upper left-hand side of your screen. And the meter is your, your typical S meter on top. And then right now I have it on a power meter setting. And so I can go, uh, interestingly enough, it shows between zero and 150 watts, even though this is a hundred watt radio. And I confirmed and I tested the, the radio is actually a hundred watts. So I thought that was kind of interesting, but you can switch that power meter between things like uh, comp, ALC, VDD, ID, and SWR. And so this is cool. I mean, there's nothing different than most radios, right? You have your ability to go between checking your power, your your voltage, your current draw, and all that stuff, you know, your SWR and everything. Uh, but yeah, just to get to that, all you have to do is tap on the meter itself, and then you'll get this little display that you see here. And then all you have to do is tap on whatever you want to actually view, whether it's your ALC or your SWR and so forth. One of the things to me that is a little bit of an inconvenience or kind of an annoyance, I haven't found a way to fix yet. And I'm hoping there is a way, but if there's not, maybe in a future firmware update, it'll be fixed. If I tap on the menu, so here's the S meter, and I tap on the S meter, right? And I'm trying to choose, and I can't remember, do I need to go to voltage or do I need to go to current? Or, hey, is it ALC that I need to go to? Uh, and then I realize what it is and I go to click it. By that time, the screen is gone or it's just disappearing as I'm clicking. And then it creates some issues. And that's particularly the case when you get to the waterfall display. And if you're clicking on VFO-A LSB and you get a list of all the different you know modes you can access and you're, oh man, that's a lot of modes and you go to click it, well, it disappears, and then you click on you know, the waterfall display or somewhere, and now you're changing frequencies. So, so that's a little bit annoying, and I'm trying to find a way to fix it. If I do find a way to fix it before the end of this episode, I'll definitely jump in and edit this part right here. And I realized I was tapping the frequency or the bands and trying to change bands when I was, when I was in the video there. Uh, but the point should be conveyed regardless that uh, the the wait time is a little bit short and we'll continue to try to figure out how to adjust that. If we continue to move on though, uh, we're going to get into this menu now. And if you click on VFO dash a LSB, now you'll be able to get uh, the options for all your different modes, you know, lower sideband, upper sideband, data, lower data, upper AM, FM, and so forth. Uh, so that's pretty convenient. Again, all you have to do is tap on VFO dash a and then tap on the mode you want. And it should bring you to that mode. We can move over to the frequency at this point, and you could actually tap on seven, and you could use the dial to change from seven to ten, to fourteen, uh, or whatever megahertz frequency you want to be on. Uh, and then you could tap on one fifty eight to change that section and so forth. If you tap on double zeros, you're actually going to get uh, a screen where it allows you to press in or type in the the frequency. So if you tap on double zeros, you could type in fourteen dot three. Zero, zero, and then hit enter and it'll bring you there. One of the other minor inconveniences that I'd like to point out, and actually to me, it's more of a major inconvenience because I'm making these YouTube videos, but every time I plug this SD card in, it asks me if I want to set up the SD card. I can click yes a million times. 
have this thing set up every time. But every time I plug it in again, it's going to ask me if I want to set that up. I mean, come on. If I've set this up already and I plug it in, can you just make a little alert that says your SD card is plugged in? Why do you have to ask me if I want to set it up every single time? So I'd like to see that fixed in a possible firmware update if possible. I do have the manual out right now and I'm going to refer to it a little bit here. But below the uh, S meter, you have what Yezu calls the important receiver settings, your attenuator, your IPO, or your AMP1 and AMP2, your roofing filter, and your automatic gain control. And this is where I'm going to refer to the manual. The attenuator, there's four settings. There's off, uh, 6 uh, dB, 12 dB, and 18 dB. So as we know, as we attenuate things with the uh, more dB, more dB, uh, we're essentially padding the signal that's coming into the radio uh, as to not cause any damage to the radio by extremely strong signals and everything along those lines. Uh, so you have your IPO, your, your amp one and amp two, the roofing filter, as I got the radio comes with three different, uh, filters. And what it's going to be is it's going to be 500 Hertz, three kilohertz and 12 kilohertz. Um, there is an optional 300 Hertz roofing filter as I'm reading in the manual. And then finally we have our automatic gain control. And real quick, I just want to read a couple of things here about automatic gain control. The automatic gain control uh, can be set for each operation band. The auto selection mode selects the optimum receiver recovery time for the reception mode. And so you have uh, different operating modes and what the automatic gain control is going to use. Um, so for example, in lower sideband, upper sideband, AM or AM narrow, automatic gain control is going to default to uh, slow. One of the things that I haven't talked about yet that I probably should go back and talk about, right under frequency, you'll see the word level. And actually what you could do is you could hit the function button on your radio. And when you hit that function button, you're presented with a list of all these different menu items that you could choose from. For example, RF power. And if I select RF power after I hit the function button in, I would then see RF power displayed where level is now displayed. And all I have to do then is use my function knob to adjust the RF power. And this comes in handy with things like CW, right? So if I have CW decode up and I don't really know how many words it's a minute, I might actually hit function and I might hit CW speed. And that way when I'm watching that decode window, I could adjust the function knob to adjust the CW speed. I think that helps out a lot because then you're able to not have to exit out of the CW decode mode and so forth and so forth. I tend to set the function button to level so that I could adjust the display of my scope. And for me, that works out because, you know, everybody's going to have these different preferences on where they want their levels to be. Um, and I ended up adjusting it to what I feel is a pretty good place for me to be able to see, especially in the waterfall, the dark signals versus the brighter signals or where there's actually a single, a signal per se, excuse me. And uh, so that's what I do. I adjust the levels and then I could also adjust the colors and I adjust the colors to be the most uh, contrasting colors that I could find. And really what it's going to come down to is finding the colors that work for you. And I'm going to start talking about the 3D display. If you were to hit 3D SS, you would be presented with a 3D display. Now you take into consideration me talking about the levels a little bit ago and the adjustments. And then you also take into consideration the colors that you might use. And that looks like a big blob of stuff, right? Well, I'm going to adjust the levels down to negative 10 dB and it looks a little bit better. And at this point I could continue on by going to the function and, and checking the colors and changing the colors till I find something that I think looks really nice. Another thing I could do is adjust the speed. So you might find that a faster speed on the 3D display is more appealing to you and you might find that a slower speed is more appealing. So anyway, I go back to adjusting the colors and I finally find a color that I like and I pretty much I stick with it. And the only other thing is, is after I find a color I like, I'm not necessarily pleased with the amount of 
uh, we'll call it noise that I'm I'm still showing on the on the scope. So I just go ahead and I adjust the level down a little bit more until I find something that I really enjoy, which is right about here for me. If we are back into the the display now with the screenshot behind me, on the bottom of the screen you see multiple things: center, 3DSS, and we've we've spoken about some of these already. Center is something that I want to discuss real quick. And if you tap center, you have three options, center, cursor, and fix. If you leave it in center, this is where your waterfall displays. You'll see a little red line in the middle of my waterfall display. That line's not going to move if you're in center. So you can move the knob left, right. It's going to stay in the center. If you move to a fix mode or uh, the cursor mode, wherever you tap on the waterfall display is where that red line is going to move. Personally, I like to keep mine on center. I think it looks the best. And then I know that if I'm looking in the center, that's where the frequency I'm on is going to be. It's just easier for me and everybody's going to have, again, personal preferences. But if we continue on, we've already talked about 3DSS. To the right of 3DSS is multi. And that's going to show you an oscilloscope and it's going to show you your AF, FFT. And within there, there's actually quite a few options of different settings that you could uh, set. And we'll go over that again in a future episode. This is more of a display thing and not not completely of the functionality thing. But, uh, you know, so there is that. I find, though, if I have multi up, it gets to be kind of busy with the S meter, the important receive info, uh, part of a waterfall display, the oscilloscope, the AF, FFT, the frequency, and so forth. Um, so I don't tend to keep that showing. If you move one more over to the right, though, you have expand, and if I tap expand once, uh, all that important receiver information, attenuator, IPO, and so forth, it disappears, which is sometimes good, because then you just have like almost a full screen of waterfall. And then if you don't want it, you just uh, hit expand again, and basically then your receive information will come back up. One of the features I haven't talked about yet is the span button, and if you hit span, you can basically move your scope or the spectrum that's being looked at for the frequencies from 1K all the way to 1,000K. So depending on what you're doing, you might want to really dial in on that signal or you might want to see the whole band. So that's a very nice little feature. And then finally, I think I've already kind of discussed it, but you have your speed option where you could adjust the speed of your waterfall display. That's the design of the user interface in a nutshell. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and continue to make videos on this radio until we have this thing fully documented. It's just going to take time. But with that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you know when I make new videos on the Yesu FTDX10 or any other radio you might be interested in. Thanks for checking out the channel. Until next time, I'm Ham Radio Dude. I wish you the best. Merry Christmas and 73. This is Ham Radio Dude.